Before the sun rises, Chaplain Khaled Latif unlocks the doors of the NYU Islamic Center. Students, not fully awake, trickle in for Fajr, or the dawn prayer service that he leads every morning. Not too long ago, college campuses could consider themselves meeting their students' religious needs if they had a Catholic, Protestant, and Jewish chaplain on staff. But the number of Muslim students on American campuses is rising. The number of international students, political refugees, and the children of immigrants on campuses has grown more than 50 percent in the past 10 years. Colleges are recognizing the need for a trained, full-time Muslim clergy presence on campus. There's a huge uh, you know, spectrum of, of what kind of gets discussed here. You know, people asking questions about their prayer, their fasting, you know, uh, if I pursue this kind of study, uh, is that something that's permissible in accordance with, you know, our religion? On the side from that, you know, we have a lot of non-Muslims that come uh, seeking help on papers and projects and, you know, just they have a really deep interest in Islam and, you know, they have questions that they want to have answered. Chaplains function as a liaison between students and the administration. That's why it's important that the growing Muslim population has someone who understands their concerns and is available at all times to speak on their behalf. But more importantly, they act as teachers, as advocates, as counselors, and as friends to the university community. I feel like, especially at NYU, our MSA, like we're so close, like we're such a close-knit group of people, like the brothers and sisters, we all work together. We have a project like the Mission Majid, so we're trying to raise money for like our own Islamic Center. Muslim students often come from conservative lifestyles that forbid many common social college activities such as bar life. Students often feel torn between the two communities and need a person to talk to. I get students from all over the world and some of them they're culture shocked. What I try to do is give them a home away from home and try and help them out from their educational life, their religious life and sometimes their social life. The closest to a school-sanctioned Islamic religious community most schools have is a Muslim Students Association or an MSA chapter. But no matter how well organized and managed, MSAs demonstrate certain structural weaknesses that a chaplain may help to remedy. It's been kind of difficult for us to have um, a lot of communication with the administration. A lot of times we would, we would go up to them and be like, you know, we have such and such a problem. And it would take us for a while to get anywhere. But um, when Khalid came on board, he spoke on our behalf as the Islamic Center. But he allowed us to, the means to, you know, communicate with the administration about different things. Just a couple weeks ago, we had a protest uh, or a teach-in here at NYU. On March 29, 2006, a club at NYU wanted to display the Danish cartoons, something Muslims all around the world took great offense to. Muslims at NYU felt that the club was able to have their event without displaying the cartoons. With that in mind, we went and approached the administration. And so I, as the chaplain, you know, would have about, I would say that, you know, if you added up the, the number of hours that we met, um, you know, with the vice presidents and the president and the dean and, and those people, you know, just myself and them, uh, you know, we had meetings in the time span of three or four days that would add up to about, you know, 20 to 25 hours just discussing the issue. And, you know, those were things that, you know, I personally feel that, the students would not have been able to do by themselves. And that's why I think it's very important to have positions like these. Universities all over the country face similar dilemmas. Without a proper advocate, many Muslim students feel disconnected from their MSA. Islam is like a field of different flowers, and every flower has its different fragrance and different colors and so on. And my, my job is to be able to maintain the students on a student level, on a unity level together, whereby they are not divided by their traditions in terms of, you know, whether you're Sunni or Shia or Sufi or whatever you come from. Uh, I try to unite them. Only about 30 colleges across the country have full-time Muslim clergy. Only a handful of them are paid. At Columbia University, Sayyid Zafaruddin Sayyid is a part-time chaplain, volunteering his services whenever he can. Uh, if the students need me for any particular uh, purpose, they have my email address and they also can reach me by phone. I usually give my telephone number to the officers of the Muslim Students Association. 
There is an even greater need for female chaplains for the Islamic community. Sanat Nadim runs the weekly Halakha, or study circle, for young women at Stony Brook University. Many of the young ladies that come to campus uh, come from traditions where the uh, male and female separation is very much part of the tradition and part of the society. So when they find a female chaplain, they're able to speak more freely to her. And it is necessary for Muslims to have a female chaplain because of the enormous misconception of the role of women in Islam. But the process of hiring a Muslim chaplain for a school is often long and arduous. Most secular colleges do not fund chaplaincies. Religious student groups receive standard support like any other college club, but NYU, like many other institutions, is not required to fund religious leaders. It's something that each church or group offers uh, because of concern for our, our student body, you know, our Catholic students or Jewish students or the Muslim students. Uh, the fact that so many young people do come to us for spiritual counsel, for fellowship, for nurture, for education, I think indicates that we fill a real need. In the meanwhile, Khalid volunteers his services full-time in hopes of making a Muslim chaplaincy a permanent position at NYU. It's important for any group of young people to have an older figure, even if only a couple of years older, uh, to whom they can look, and also somebody who's trained in dealing with them on a personal basis and in a group. But more importantly is the fact that he provides uh, an older brother uh, role for many. He, his office is right next to mine. And it's constant, constant, all day long there are young people coming to see him, uh, which means they really respect him but also accept him.